Hey folks, Serkantar here again. I know I haven't done one of these in a while, but I've got a bit of a book review for you guys. And this one, actually, this is actually going to be a review and an interview. I actually was able to get a hold of the author of the book, and he allowed me to do an audio interview on the condition that was just audio. It didn't have any video in it. So, I'm going to do the review of uh, The Final Cure, and then you'll hear the interview shortly thereafter. So, let's get to it. Um, to start, pretty much I didn't know what to expect going into this. Um, but what surprised me was that this is like I tried to look up some information on this guy, and I couldn't find anything. It turns out that this was not only his first novel, but he's actually a high school student, and I was really surprised that his writing was good enough to get it published. Now, the plot of the story revolves around a man by the name of Lawrence Clark, a man who we quickly find out is about 97 years old, and yet has the body of somebody in their mid-twenties, and we learn through a short flashback that he was the sole survivor of this deadly virus that infected his city in the year of 1939. We also find out that the virus was a result of government experiments create, to create this perfect super soldier with enhanced strength, endurance, and the inability to age. However, before Lawrence has time to use his new powers, he's attacked by the people in charge of the project and put in a cryogenic sleep. And from there, the story goes on about how he's awakened, becomes part of a special government program, and that there are still people out there who want to, like, use this virus or slash cure thing for their own personal gains. And it's pretty much up to Lawrence Clark to stop them while trying to figure out what happened to him all these years ago. Now, the story itself is, is really fast-paced with many plot twists. And throughout the book, I kept guessing as to who Lawrence could really trust, who was really on his side, and the book did a really good job of keeping a steady flow of suspense while giving the reader a little time to breathe in between the different action scenes. I mean, they never drag on too long, and they help her provide transition for the next fight. But where I have a little bit of a problem is that there were a few times that there seemed to be too much going on at once, and if you're not reading it very carefully, you might miss something that's like really important to the plot. And this in itself isn't a bad thing overall, but I feel that some of the chapters could have been a little more developed and we could have gone into some more detail. Um, one of the other things I would have liked to have seen was a little more development on the different characters and maybe to have known a little bit more about Lawrence Clark's past prior to becoming this super soldier being controlled by the government. But in the end, pretty much all the loose ends are tied up, all the issues brought up are resolved, and I won't spoil the ending for anyone listening to this, but the postlude that is after the final battle hints at the possibility of a sequel, and maybe an, an even new series involving the character Lawrence Clark. And I actually bring that up when I interview him, and you'll hear that come up when I play that next, but... If you really like suspense novels, or if you're looking for a quick read, I really would recommend The Final Cure for you. It's only like 150 pages long, it can be read in a few hours. And it's really a page turner that will keep you guessing, but it's important that you make sure you're paying close attention to everything going on, or you might end up a little confused. And I would also keep an eye on the author if you really like his work, because I believe you'll be seeing more of his work in the coming years. All in all, it was short, but really enjoyable to read. And, as I said with my review of The Road, it's one of those books that kind of brings back the joy of reading for fun, and not reading because you have to. And while there are a few flaws, they are minor, and overall it was well done for this guy's first book. Final rating is going to be an 8 out of 10. So with that out of the way, let's go on to the interview with Cody Thomas Chandler, and learn more about this book. So I'm here with Cody Thomas Chandler, um, author of The Final Cure. I want to thank you for coming in for an interview. All right, 
So the first question I have is, what got you into writing to begin with? Well, I started to write um, probably when I was in eighth grade. Um, I was a big reader back when I was smaller, like in elementary school, intermediate school. And I stopped like to read so much because I had to do it so much for school. And then I still wanted to be involved with reading and writing, and I kind of turned writing as a way to vent all my anger from the day. And then it kind of evolved from there into writing books. So. Um, how would you describe your style of writing? Um, I would describe it as more movie-esque, I guess you'd say, where I don't try and go too far into detail, but I try and make it more visual so you can see it as you read it. So. Yes, that's something I've noticed. Um, how is it that you were able to balance your schoolwork while writing this novel? Um, that's a great question. I actually am able to balance that by not sleeping. Cut back a lot of sleep, and you can get a lot done, especially throughout the day. So, I mean, I kind of did it after I did my schoolwork, after I went to school, after I did all my extracurricular activities, and then I kind of sat down and said, "Yeah, I feel like writing," or "No, not today." So I did it after after school and after everything else got done. Um. So, what was the inspiration for the story behind the Final Cure? Um. The inspiration behind this book was from freshman biology class. Uh, we were learning about genetics, and I kind of had a lot of unanswered questions that I wanted an answer to. And since I'm not a geneticist, I can't exactly answer them. So I kind of made a fictional story about a cure that makes a guy super strong. And from there, it kind of evolved into, here's some characters, here's a plot twist, here's this, here's that, and that's how the book came about. So. Um, well... Was there any inspiration for some of the characters, such as Lawrence Clark? Um, not really. I kind of just wrote just what I thought that a character would be like. Um, I guess some of my characters' knowledge, I guess you'd say, some of the minor characters came from teachers that I've had, ideas that they've given me in class. So, not too much on the main character, but other, other minor characters, probably, yeah, definitely. Um, what were some of the, were there any obstacles that you had to overcome, such as writer block, that you had to overcome when you were writing this? Um, when I was writing this, I had to overcome writer's block a lot. Um, you find that as you get going, you don't want to finish, because it takes up a lot of time, and you have to think about what you're going to say, and you don't know where to go. Sometimes you'll be on a roll, and then ten seconds later you won't know what word to use. And it's just hard to come up with the right words, and sometimes you get writer's block for a day, you get it for a minute, sometimes you get it for a week or a month. So, it's just interesting, kind of, it changes day to day. Um, the story ends in a way that it kind of leaves room for a sequel and even a potential new series. Is there a possibility of having future installments with the character Lawrence Clark? Oh, definitely. Um, currently I'm working on a sequel for the book, um, and a sequel for the sequel. Um, whether or not they'll get done anytime soon is another story. I mean... It takes some time to write these, so it's hard to do. But yeah, definitely open for a new series, more books, everything. That kind of leads me to my next question. Um, do you have any intention of continuing writing while you're in college? Is this something you might want to pursue as a career? Um, in college, probably not. When I go away, I want to focus on college, more or less, instead of writing. So I want to get everything I'm doing now out of the way. So I plan on finishing up writing for at least now, while I'm still in high school and then maybe picking it up later after college. Uh, is there anybody in particular who really helped you out with this book that you want to thank? Definitely my grandpa, who paid for it to be published because I had put up money up front, and he paid for it. So hopefully I get the chance to repay him with the money that I earned from the book. So. And last question. Uh, do you have any advice that you'd like to give to aspiring writers? Um, never get up. Give up. Just keep pushing through, keep trying to write, keep figuring out what your passion is, and go for it.